in this video, I'm gonna in this video, I'm gonna discuss um, magnetic domains and a ferromagnetic material. Yo. Ah. Hey. It's a little too loud. So magnetism. Um, I gave a preview in a previous video that magnetism comes from the motion of electrons. It's not that a motion of electric charges. It's not like we have a new material that has the magnet. We know that an atom is made of um, Inside the nucleus, there's a proton and neutrons, and then around the nucleus, there's electrons that's moving around constantly. So this electron here, electron here is uh, moving around. So it's moving around. Let's imagine like it's moving around the nucleus. And this motion of um, uh, orbit around, so revolution, E minus is, so where we have this E minus here and the E minus revolution, revolution. This gives a um, dipole moment. So there's a little dipole moment that's being um, generated from the electron that's moving around, north and south. But this electron is rotating around the uh, uh, nucleus, but it's bigger. It, this um, electrons at the same time is also making a spin. And it is that this spin that gives a larger magnetic dipole. So it gives like a, the spinning of an electron is uh, contributes to the magnetism. To the magnetism. So the electron spins um, produces um, magnetic field. So the electron spins acts like a tiny little magnet. But wait, no all the, so every materials are made of um, atoms and inside the atoms, you're gonna have electron, electron spinning. But not all the materials are magnetic. Everybody has electrons, everybody have electron spins. And then all these electrons spinning and spinning, the producing magnetic moment. And uh, how come um, not all the materials are magnetic, right? Because these spins, electron spins come in, electron spin come in random. So um, all the electrons, so these spins, all the electrons have a spins and then, um, but not all the materials are magnetic. These spins, because that these spins usually come in random. So these electron spins usually random and it cancels out. Magnetic fields. So the magnetic fields generated by each electron spin, but they, they're random, so they cancel out. Only the magnetic, uh, only the material that's called ferromagnetic material. You gotta memorize this. Um, iron, nickel, cobalt. These are the ferromagnetic material that has magnetic domains.
So what does it mean? Because um, so typically these uh, elections spin come in a random direction and they all cancel out. These um, ferromagnetic material have uh, unpaired electrons, unpaired electrons. So you have a leftover um, spins. So let me see what I want to say is unpaired electrons. So these have an unpaired electron spin. And this can cause an interaction among adjacent to form magnetic domains. So whenever you have, um, let's say like a phase transition or something that has the um, things that start, it always comes from some kind of impurities or um, some kind of a defect. Uh, for example, when you boil up, when you want to boil water, so water becomes from um, uh, uh, liquid water to a steam. Um, every time that the boiling happens from the, where the defect is, um, if you have a perfect pure state that do not have any defect, um, it's going to be very, very hard to boil the water. You got to give a little like a um, little shake or that make the pot to have a little defect points and that's where the boiling start. So this defect, you're gonna have in some materials, you're gonna have some defect and that's where the electrons um, spin just lines up. So let's say here, there's that one unpaired electrons and then along with it, you're gonna have everybody that's gonna be aligning together in this region. However, Around here, you're gonna have electron spins pointing in this way so that the magnetic moments are that way. So inside the ferromagnetic material, there is the um, lined up magnetic domains. You can observe, it looks something like this. But you see this um, for the, so this is the magnetic domains. And uh, in the state that's, um, let me see. Um, so this nail is maybe made of a steel and steel is an alloy of um, iron. So you have uh, some kind of uh, iron bits in it, but we know this, um, this is iron that has the magnetic domain, but they're not magnetized because these magnetic domains in the iron are in a random direction. So you do have a magnetic domains, but these magnetic domains are, you have a bunch of different various domains and um, they're pointing all in a different direction. So that's why it's uh, magnetized. So, so here is the picture of actually the magnetic domains uh, using a um, special microscope that you can polarize so that you can just align it in a certain direction to see the color difference of uh, all the magnetic domains. And you see that um, it has, um, they all have a different color, means that they're pointing in a different direction. So the magnetic domains are pointing in a different directions. And so what happens to, but then um, this nail that has those irons, that has the random direction of magnetic domains, the ferromagnetic material, ferromagnetic materials, when you put it close to the, um, permanent magnet, where in the magnetic field, you know that it gets attracted, it feels the magnetic force and uh, responds to it, 
And then at this moment, it's becoming its own magnet. So how does this unmagnetized ferromagnetic material, which has those random uh, magnetic domains, respond in an external magnetic field? So imagine that, um, like I just showed you, um, we have, a, let's say I have a nail. And then this one contains iron, which is ferromagnetic material. And you put it close to the bar magnet that has, let's say, north and south. And uh, if it gets close to it, it sticks, it gets attracted. So attraction. So what happens initially, it's not magnetized. So inside this iron, It's, um, here is the non-magnetized. This one has the um, magnetic domain. They're all pointing in a different direction. something like that. Then, but if you put it in, uh, let's put this uh, iron in the magnetic field. Put it in the, external magnetic field, external. Then what happens to these uh, domains? These domains, it feels the external magnetic field. So let's see, S and N, right? So it has like an external magnetic field. So they align along this external magnetic field. So it's just gonna be like, Maybe some of them is still stubborn, not quite aligned. But overall, you see that it aligns, the net alignment will be pointing in the, along with the external magnet, so it becomes, becomes a magnet, magnetized. at that moment. Um, if you put it in, um, even in a stronger, in the stronger uh, magnetic field, what happens? Uh, then these are uh, random domain, it's gonna be in a stronger magnetic field. So this S and N is gonna be even stronger, right? Then these magnetic uh, domains is really, they're gonna align with it along, then becomes even uh, strongly magnetized. So because these has a ferromagnetic, uh, they are made of ferromagnetic material that has the magnetic domains, um, they can be aligned uh, with the magnetic field, external magnetic field. It looks something like this. Um, so initially it's random and then you put it in a external magnetic field, just move like this. That it becomes magnetized. So here's the 
magnetized. But once you remove it, and then you remove the external, When you remove from the external magnetic field, um, those thermal motion, thermal fluctuation, causes them to uh, go back to the, its random magnetic domain again. and becomes unmagnetized. You can imagine that, I, you know, because they're moving randomly. So once you remove it from the external magnetic field, so right now it's in the magnetic field, so it sticks, but if you remove it, just becomes unmagnetized, no interaction, temporarily a magnet. Outside. So if that's the case, you can see that um, it's, if it's a below lower temperature, it magnet acts better magnet. And uh, there's a temperature that's called Curie temperature that makes it, um, takes away all the permanent magnet, magnetic domains. Um, so like a rare earth material is ferromagnetic material, but um, pure state of a rare earth elements um, have a very low, um, the Curie temperature of the rare earth um, material is lower than a room temperature. So it's hard to make a permanent magnet. Um, so you put alloy, you make it as an alloy, um, you compound, you put a compound with the iron and then it makes it um, permanent magnet. So how to make a permanent magnet? You can stroke the, um, this un, unmagnetized ferromagnet magnetic material, you stroke it with the permanent magnet repeatedly and then you can make a permanent magnet. You can leave this ferromagnetic material in a very, very strong magnetic field, leave it there, it becomes a permanent magnet. So to make a, a permanent magnet, against a magnetized, a magnetized ferro magnetic material. Or you can leave the magnetized ferromagnetic material in a strong magnetic And as you can see that do temperature do play uh, some uh, important role to make the good um, permanent magnet. 
I have a question. What if I drop this? This is a permanent magnet, right? If I drop it really hard on the floor or give some very big, uh, do a big work that kinetic energy in it um, or the energy in it, um, what happens? Does the magnet get stronger or weaker or doesn't do anything? All right, so here is the lecture about the ferromagnetic material and magnetic domain. So that's what iron, nickel, cobalt are the ferromagnetic material that has the magnetic domain and it can be magnetized. See you in the class.